You are watching the news summary on Kazakh TV, review of the major news of the week from Kazakhstan. I'm Jana Sagandikova. Good evening. A devastating mudslide hit the southwestern part of Almaty last week. As a result, hundreds of houses and dozens of vehicles and infrastructure have been damaged. Approximately at 2 a.m., the villagers of Karagaili were awakened by a terrible rumble. At first, the villagers thought it was an earthquake. However, when they ran into the streets, they were taken by surprise. People were scared. Cars were washed by the currents, destroying gates, making loud, scary noises, which were heard kilometers away. The mudslide swept everything on its way and left only ruins behind. The houses located in the vicinity of riverbeds suffered the most damage. The powerful mudslide partially destroyed buildings, cars, and almost demolished all the bridges and damaged a gas pipeline. There was a road right here. It got washed away. You can see the damage. Fortunately, an old dam located two kilometers from the village withstood the flood's pressure and saved the locals from even more devastating consequences. All the emergency services, as well as the forces of the National Guard and utilities, arrived and carried out their work on the scene. During the first hours, hundreds of people have been evacuated. The authorities placed them in a village school, according to Deputy Mayor of Almaty, Yuri Ilyin. As a result, three districts were partially flooded. Luckily, no one was injured in the disaster. People did seek the help of the ambulance, but only those diagnosed with high or low blood pressure. So there was no registered cases on the injured after the floods and mudslide. Kazakh Deputy Prime Minister Bardibek Sapurbaev has personally flown over the area affected by the mudslide and confirmed there was no danger. Mayor of Almaty Ahmedjad Yesimov, together with a group of committed professionals, circled the mountain lakes, dams and the affected area in a helicopter. The local authorities claim that there is no recurrent threat of the mud flow. The main reason was the weather, a sudden warming and melting of a glacier, which is located at an altitude of 3,500 meters. We have been there. The situation is stable, and now there is no danger. There was no water in the lake. We also checked the dam, and we didn't see the water there either. Had the 15-meter high mud flow broken the dam, the consequences would have been disastrous. After all, the leaked flows affected hundreds of homes. Some establishments require serious repair work. We hardly managed to leave the house in a few seconds. All the documents were washed away. The city commission will arrive soon. The deputy mayor of Almaty and district authorities are here already. The total amount of damage caused by the natural disaster will be estimated after the restoration work is completed. It might take some time. The government and Almaty authorities have taken the issue under their tight control. Kazakhstan and Iran have already reached an agreement that the Islamic Republic of Iran will invest 6 billion U.S. dollars in the Kazakh economy for construction of a refinery in the Mangistau region. In addition, the parties have agreed on the construction of a 52 million U.S. dollar meat processing plant in Semei, has announced at the Kazakh Iranian Business Forum in Almaty. 35 heads of Iranian leading innovative companies, businessmen and government officials of both states have attended the forum. They discussed manufacturing, agriculture and other sectors of the economy. The main event of the meeting, however, was the opening of the Kazakh Iranian Center for Technology Exchange. An exhibition of innovative achievements of Iran will constantly work here to facilitate the process of locating business partners. On the first day of the business forum, the parties reached agreements worth 500 million U.S. dollars. Iranian businessmen showed interest in the telecommunications equipment. Iran for us is a large market. Currently, some of our companies are concluding agreements to sell in Iran. There are also manufactured telecommunications products, and they will be delivered to Iran. The Iranians also have projects which aroused great interest among Kazakh businessmen, especially among agricultural farmers. The fertilizer is based on the nano technologies that can increase productivity by 10 times were presented at the exhibition. I see a great future in this cooperation because the presence of the two countries in the region and innovations is very important. Accordingly, we need, of course, the state's support. Both countries have to support the private sector in the growth and development of innovative technologies.
Iranian businessmen have also established contacts in the Mangistau region. Today, Aktau is an appealing destination for obvious reasons. Kazakhstan's fourth oil refinery will be housed in the region. The investment issues in the construction are currently being addressed. Iran has transported petroleum products through the Aktau seaport in the past. Therefore, the two countries have already had enjoyed fruitful collaboration. The businessmen are hoping for the further use of the transit transport potential of the Caspian Sea and the railways, and an increase in mutual trade. The trade turnover last year totaled 650 million U.S. dollars. Our economy will Iran. Our economies will complement each other. Iran has needs in metal, grain. We are now considering the construction of the fourth oil refinery in the Mangistau region, and its oil products in the future will be exported to Iran. The Iranian businessmen in Kazakhstan see great potential for cooperation. The Mangistau region is one of the major transit centers. The entire necessary infrastructure has been created here. There are excellent preconditions for the development of trade relations, including regional ones. The Aktau seaport and railway lines Beineu Jeskazgan and Uzen Berket Urgan will make the region a useful platform for the new refinery and will provide an opportunity to export oil products both on the international and domestic markets. The plant will produce gasoline, diesel and oil and aviation fuel. Kazakhstan's petroleum products market is witnessing a shortage. 30% of country's total consumption is imported from abroad. The refineries in the Pavlodar, South Kazakhstan and Atara regions do not cover country's needs. Experts welcome the future plant. Petroleum products from the region will be exported to the north of Iran, while Iran will deliver crude oil to different markets. This scheme has stirred great interest among Chinese companies. Iran is one of the largest suppliers of crude oil to China. Thus, China will be able to increase the volume of oil supplies from Iran. Our oil companies will be able to sell oil right here, while at present they spend money on transportation costs to deliver oil to foreign markets. To date, the minimum investment in the project is estimated at 6 billion U.S. dollars. The construction period is five years. The plant's capacity will be 10 million tons per year. An oil industry longtime campaigner Joldas Togjanov, one of the discoverers of oil in the region, believes in huge prospects of the new refinery. The president, Nursultan Nazarbayev, has explained the need to begin the construction of the refinery. I believe that the Mangista region meets all the requirements for that. There are large reserves of oil. Last year, the volume of oil production totaled 18 million tons. There are many consumer markets. In addition, we have all the opportunities for logistics. The contract for consumption will be signed by the end of the year. The new refinery will employ 10,000 residents of the region. The Russian economists and political scientists have been inspired by Kazakhstan's recent development. Kazakhstan may serve as an example of a young nation with a developing economy, they said. An analytical article was published by the Daily Vedomosti. The author, a well-known economist and sociologist, Vladislav Inazemtsev, has listed Kazakhstan's seven key lessons for Russia. While Russia was seeking ways to become independent of the raw material addiction, yet the export share of the energy products kept growing, Kazakhstan focused on the growth of production of raw materials. In 2014, the production of non-ferrous metals has increased by 2.4 times, gas production grew by 3 times, oil by 3.3 times, and uranium by 15 times, compared to 1990. The author tells a story of how the Kazakh youth studies abroad at the state's expenses and how the country attracts multi-billion dollar investments. On top of that, he had noted that the country is ready to allow foreign citizens to its civil service. Kazakhstan is establishing cooperation with a number of larger players. Russia was not quite ready to follow this course. Since the beginning of 2000, Moscow was focusing on Washington that was obsessed with the fight on terrorism, then in Berlin and Paris that resisted both the U.S. Germany. Later, Moscow turned to Beijing with its grudge against the West. During that time, Astana has been building equal relations with Washington, Moscow, Brussels and Beijing. Kazakhstan's multi-vector foreign policy has been fruitful as well. Hundreds of large enterprises with foreign capital are active in the country today, while another advantage of the Kazakh economy is the new industrialization program. In my opinion, Russia is not paying enough attention to its rapidly growing neighbor. We are used of the concept of teaching the great in order to be able to learn from the younger. 
However, following the results of 2015, Russia, one of the world's richest countries in raw materials, has succumbed to the small industrial Singapore in terms of its exports. What year will Kazakhstan bypass us? Anyone thinks it can happen, the time will tell. The author has also pointed out the plan of nation, which just may be the topic for new analysis and future articles. What is the purpose of the innovation cluster? How can the government help in the implementation of the rationalization potential? These among other issues have been discussed during the meeting of members of the Republican Informational Advocacy Group with the stop of Astana railway station, representatives of NGOs, ethnic and cultural associations and Astana youth organizations. The new standards of passenger service quality are to be introduced. The state is ready to stimulate both the innovators and businesses that support them. 350 businesses have been technologically tasked. The Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Investments will provide tools and financial means to solve them. This means that any company employee which is engaged in rail transport services may suggest his or her own ideas for review by a special commission. A nationwide contest to determine the best innovators will help bring good ideas to life. As part of the 100 Steps program, we are working on the 63rd step, which is the creation of two innovative clusters, the Astana Business Campus and the Autonomous Cluster Fund. As part of the latter fund, there are main state institutions and educational centers for innovation. One of the sites where these innovations will be successfully implemented is the Astana Railway Station. Smart technology will add comfort, first of all, for the passengers. The national company Kazakhstan Garish Sapari, jointly with the French company Airbus, will set up an assembly and test spacecraft complex in Astana. This was announced during a briefing in Astana by Minister of Investments and Development Asset Isakashev. The implementation of this project will aid in creation of Kazakhstan's own high-tech enterprises capable to perform a complete production style of spacecrafts and components, the minister noted. It will also open an access to the global market of satellite manufacturers for Kazakhstan. Also, Kazakh astronaut Aydin Aymbedov has been promoted to second flight engineer from crew member. Aymbedov was given the promotion upon completion of a mandatory training. He will be the third Kazakh astronaut in history and the third member of the crew. Russian Sergei Volkov and the first Danish astronaut Andreas Magensen will also take part in the flight. The flight to the International Space Station is scheduled for September 1st. A part of prosecutor's office competences is planned to be gradually transferred to investigating judges, country's prosecutor general Askat Dalbayev had announced. Implementing the objectives outlined in the 100 Steps program, prosecutors have prepared a package of proposals on reformation of the public administration system, such as the improvement of the Juris Institution and for prosecutors to be less involved in legal proceedings in certain categories of civil disputes. The Prosecutor General has also reported on the statistics for the past six months at the board meeting. According to Dalbayev, the registration of pretrial investigations has increased by nearly 26 percent. The number of minor offenses has at least doubled, while major offenses increased by 11.5 percent, and the number of exceptionally grave crimes grew by 8.5 percent. However, the number of criminal offenses of medium gravity has slightly reduced by 2.6 percent. The crime detection rate has increased in exceptionally grave crimes by more than 20.5 percent, in major offenses by 13 percent. The Prosecutor General also called on every citizen of Kazakhstan to take the initiative to participate in the discussion of the proposed reforms. The implementation of such an important for the country reform is impossible without public participation. In this regard, I charge the Prosecutor General's office to create a website where anyone could leave proposals for reforms and a further improvement of our legislation. From 2016, Kazakhstan's state officials will work according to a newly implemented system. The proposed career development model will resemble the military service, strict discipline and consistent career growth. Employees at state agencies will begin their careers with low-ranked positions, gradually promoting to higher ranks. This will hopefully create more professional civil servants. At present, state agencies are recruiting people with non-core education, and only after 10 years at their positions, they acquire the necessary skills. 
Будет профессионализироваться государственная служба. The civil service system will be improved. We will hold trainings, professional workshops. We also intend to form a specific culture, spirit of a statesman who dedicated his or her career to the state. As part of the introduction of the new system, officials will develop leadership skills, eloquence, stress resistance and even business skills. Every three years they will definitely improve their qualifications. A new code for civil servants will be created for the officials. This handbook will include rules of demeanor, business etiquette and even instructions on how to deal with the press. The anti-corruption scheme will also be enshrined in here. Officials will be explained the difference between a gift and a bribe. The rules will also describe what kind of gifts a civil servant may accept and in what situations, because our public strongly criticizes such practices. The Academy of Civil Service of Kazakhstan will play a key role in this reform. The elite of the country's managers will be formed at this academy. The officials will soon have to learn not only to work, but also to think differently. Former Kazakh soldiers who had served in Afghanistan have decided to take up the patriotic education of youth, as announced at the Central Communications Services briefing. The veterans have offered to open military patriotic and sports clubs in the country together with the government officials. The veterans are willing to become mentors for young people at no cost, they say. The initiators of the idea believe that studies in these clubs could educate the children not only to love the country, but also develop other human qualities. The Afghan war veterans have offered to hold active work with the future recruits. In their opinion, the future soldiers which serve in the army are not properly prepared for it. They also noted that people who care about responsibility and duty are prone to be law-abiding citizens. The veterans offered to include such citizens into a special category. If a government official was caught red-handed and his or her guilt was proved in court, this irreparably damages the image of the entire state. It is necessary to label such individuals the enemy of the people. A large-scale triptych painting, Eternal Nation, was presented in Astana. On the three to six meter canvases, the artist depicted Khans and Bees, who played an important role in the development of the Kazakh Khanate. The portrait of President Nusultan Nazarbayev became the central composition of the triptych. This three-section painting has been devoted to the 550th anniversary of the Kazakh Khanate. It reflects the centuries-old history of Kazakhstan. The art team of five local artists led by Yerbola Tolebay was engaged in the creation of a series of paintings for several years. But this was only the beginning. Sixteen more paintings will be created under the Eternal Nation project. I think that the pictures are unique. The artists have managed to demonstrate the culture, economy, daily life and history of that era. The project is dedicated to the 550th anniversary of the Kazakhanate. I think that pictures will be of interest among Kazakhstanis as well as the foreign guests. Kerry and Janibe Khans are the key figures on the first section. The second one features Tauke Khan announcing a new set of laws to the bees. The central figure of the triptych is Nursultan Nazarbayev. The president is specifically shown in motion. According to the artist, the leader of the nation unites not only the past and present, but also the future of Kazakhstan. After a short break, the artist will start a new work. This time, they will have to depict the time of the Scythians, Khans and Kipchaks. Tourist contracts will be insured and a reserve fund will be set up in order to protect Kazakh tourists from possible fraud. The representatives of the Association of Tourist Agencies have offered their solutions at a meeting in Almaty. The Ministry of Investments and Development, in cooperation with the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs, are designing a new law to tighten the requirements for the tour operators. We offer to insure the tourist contract. What does it mean if you sign a contract with the tour operator through an agency and if that operator fails to carry out the terms of the contract properly? When the tourist is abroad, the operator will have to cover the whole amount stipulated in the contract. However, the holidays can be spoiled not only by fraudsters, but also by own debts. Kazakhstan's debts to each other, to banks and state agencies, total almost 1.5 trillion tenge. Over 800,000 citizens have been included on the list of debtors. One of the most effective preventive measures to recover debts is restriction to leave the country.
Over 200,000 Kazakhstanis will not be able to leave the country for vacations due to the outstanding debts this summer. The total amount of debts has reached about 400 billion tenge. The Minister of Justice has stressed that the ban on traveling abroad is an efficient measure that motivates Kazakhstanis to repay debts on time. About 96 billion tenge has been recovered up to date. Безусловно, эта мера действенна. Мы, получается, сняли запрет с начала года почти. Of course, this measure is effective. We lifted nearly 11,000 bans, and almost 40,000 bans have been removed since 2013. And even if a debtor pays all the bills, traveling the same day won't be possible. Если же гражданин оплатил долг, if a person paid the debts, he or she would have to submit a proper receipt, and within two days, a corresponding order would be issued to the Justice Ministry. Only then the debtor would be allowed to leave the country. According to the Minister of Justice, a greater number of potential no-exit citizens live in Almaty, almost 33,000. Also a significant number of debtors live in the Karaganda, Pavlodar, Kostanay and South Kazakhstan regions. Astana's flight catering complex has been upgraded this year. Now, up to 5,000 meals can be prepared in 24 hours with the new equipment. The menu ranges from light vegetable salad to salmon. There are also pilaf, manti and traditional Kazakh sausage, kazi. And these are not traditional banquet dishes. The Astana International Airport has presented a new menu. The cooks are now working in the new catering complex equipped with modern equipment. Up to 10,000 servings per day may be cooked at the facility. We have expanded the range of dishes. It is much wider now. We hold presentations every year, and this is also the company's wish. We cook dishes that the company chooses. The airline spends from 2,500 to 5,000 tenge per one meal. The business class meal is estimated at 7,000 tenge. The Astana airport has been supplying in-flight meals for 45 years. There were times when the menu featured only coffee and sandwiches. The growth of passengers has caused the need to build a new shop. We realize that we need to extend and expand the menu. We also take into account different preferences, including baby food, charter flights, halal and so on. In the coming months, more foreign companies will use the services of the Astana flight catering complex. According to estimates, up to 3 million servings are cooked in one year. The Startup Projects Contest for Young Entrepreneurs has kicked off in the country, according to the chairman of the Bolashak Association, Kondek Bishinbaev. It was organized by the Bolashak Association. The applications from young entrepreneurs have already been accepted, with the deadline set out to September 20th. The prize fund is 25 million tenge. These funds, according to the organizers, will be awarded to the creators of the best projects. The Bolashak graduate Arman Barminbaev is the director of an architectural and design office. Currently, he's very knowledgeable about the design and landscape and gardening. The young business owner is full of ideas and most importantly, he has the experience in decorating apartments and offices. The problem now is to find an investor to launch his startup project. The contest announced by Bolashak offers new possibilities for such entrepreneurs. The main idea of our startup is to give people ready-to-use design and architectural solutions within 50 days. Parmin Baev personally supervises each stage of the design and repair. He says if he wins the competition, he would expand a number of services in his business. The winner of the startup Bolashak will receive 7 million tenge, the runner-up will receive 5 million, and whoever finishes third will take away 3 million tenge. The sponsor has promised to allocate an additional grant in the amount of 10 million tenge. The creators of the most interesting projects will be able to get loans from the Bytrek holding at low interest rates. The contest will last three to four months. At the first stage, we will choose 20 projects. During the second phase, we will carry out additional contests and trainings. After the completion, we will select 10 more projects. During the last phase, three best projects will be selected out of 10. All this will be shot as a reality show on television. These were the main news for the past week on Kazakh TV. You are watching the news summary from Kazakhstan, my home country. I'm Jana Sagandikova. I'll see you later. Have a good and productive week. Goodbye.